Eggs can only hatch out chicks if they are incubated by using a broody hen or by using an incubator. In this video, I'll take you through the process of incubating chicken eggs from the start. We'll cover everything you need to know from selecting the right eggs to incubate to setting up your incubator and monitoring the temperature and humidity. You'll learn about the different stages of development and what to expect as your eggs hatch. So whether you're a seasoned chicken keeper or just starting out, this video is a must watch for anyone interested in incubating chicken eggs. When selecting chicken eggs for incubating, it's important to choose eggs that are healthy and fertile. So here are some tips to help you select the best eggs. Choose eggs from healthy hens. Make sure the hens you're getting the eggs from are healthy and well fed. Sick or malnourished hens may produce eggs that are not viable and some diseases can be passed through the egg from the mother hen. Look for clean, uncracked eggs. Dirty or cracked eggs can introduce bacteria into your incubator and harm the developing embryos. Remember, the incubator is a breeding ground for bacteria. How to tell if your eggs are fertilized. Here we've got one, two, three unfertilized eggs. You can see the little white blotch in the center and there is kind of a darker circle around it. But this egg is fertilized. Do you see how definite the little white ring is? And there's actually a little white ring around it also. It's difficult to see it. Let's see if I can get it better. Now, can you make out? two circles, one inside quite bright and the other one outside where the unfertilized egg just has like a little white splotch with a darker outside to it. So unfertilized, fertilized. Check the egg's shape because the larger eggs can be more difficult for the chicks to hatch from and the smaller eggs may not contain enough nutrition for the developing embryo. So look for eggs that are medium sized. Preparing your incubator. If it's your first use of the incubator, I give it a little wash with warm soapy water anyway and rinse it off. Be careful of avoiding the electrical units, any electrical parts. So I will use a wet cloth or a, a well wrung out sponge. I also like to use Smite spray to clean my incubators. So you need to make sure that your incubator is clean and free of any debris or bacteria. Use a mild detergent and warm water to clean the incubator and then rinse it thoroughly. It needs to be very clean for those little eggs and the baby chicks that hatch. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for your incubator. Each incubator is different. However, hatching is the same really in any incubator. Make sure it's placed in a location where the temperature is consistent and where there are no drafts or direct sunshine. Very important. Add water to your incubator. It should say this in the manufacturer's instructions. But fill the water reservoir in the incubator with clean, lukewarm water. This will help maintain the humidity level inside the incubator. Check the temperature. Temperature is pretty much the most important thing when you're incubating. It must remain steady. The ideal temperature for hatching chicken eggs is between 37.2 Celsius and 38.3 Celsius, which is between 99 and 101 Fahrenheit. I always incubate at 37.6 regardless of what incubator I use and I use many different ones or what chicken eggs I'm hatching. 37.6 seems to be perfect. So if the temperature is too low and nothing has changed in the room, adjust the thermostat to increase the temperature. If it's too high, adjust the thermostat to decrease the temperature. Check the humidity using a hygrometer. Day one to day 18, I keep it at about 45 to 55. And then I will raise it to 60, 65 for hatching because it's inclined to jump up itself while the eggs are hatching anyway. If the humidity is too low, add some more water to the reservoir if it's empty. If the correct amount of water is in the reservoir, I will close the vents just a little at a time until the incubator reaches the correct humidity. If this means having to close the vents too much, I have found that placing a large bowl or multiple bowls of hot water around the incubator can help raise the 
humidity inside the incubator. So this shows you how important it is to have a steady room where your incubator is. If it's too high, open the incubator's vents to allow some of the moisture to escape. Let the incubator stabilize once you've set it up and the temperature and the humidity readings are correct. Leave it for 24 hours before you add eggs to it. Okay, I have the incubator heating. I've just turned it on. The temperature's coming up nicely, which is great. I will be leaving it. I only have it on a couple of hours. I won't be putting any eggs in until tomorrow because I want it to stabilize. Setting the eggs in the incubator. If you're manually turning the eggs, use a pencil to mark one side of each egg with an X and the other side with an O. This will help you keep track of the eggs which have been turned and which haven't. Gently place the eggs in the incubator with the egg side facing up. Make sure the eggs are evenly spaced, ideally not touching each other. Okay guys, we're putting in the eggs. The temperature rolls up nicely to 37.6. This is a tiny egg, although I've often seen the larger chicks can come out of the tiny eggs. But let's see. There is the chance they're not all fertilized, of course. Check the temperature and humidity levels in the incubator throughout incubation. Adjust them if necessary. One of an increase or decrease in temperature makes a big difference. So you really need to keep the temperature steady and keep the humidity between 45 to 60. The eggs must be turned at least three times a day. The reason for this is because if they're not turned, the embryo inside the egg can stick to the inside of the eggshell. You can do this by manually, gently rotating the eggs or use an automatic egg turner if your incubator has one. Day seven, I will handle these to see what's working and what's not. In the meantime, I'll just make sure that there's some water in the well at all times. This is a handy little manual turner. So three times a day I will turn them. So this day next week, I'll record the candling if I can. It's difficult to record it, but I will try. So today is day zero. Tomorrow will be day one of 20. When you're candling the eggs, it's also a good time to check for cracks. Sometimes you won't see a crack in an egg until you shine that light through it. Remove any eggs that are cracked or damaged as again they may introduce bacteria into the incubator and harm the developing embryos. On day 18 the eggs go into lockdown. So what this means is ideally you don't open the incubator. You allow the humidity to build up inside it. You don't turn the eggs anymore. So the little embryo inside the egg is getting ready to hatch and they need to get into a very specific position to hatch properly. So you stop turning the eggs three days before hatch date to allow the embryo to get into the correct position. You also increase the humidity. So you're looking to get it to about 70%. This will help soften the eggshells and it also makes it easier for the chicks to hatch. It will prevent the egg membranes from drying out during hatching once they have cracked through the shell. You normally will not need to add any more water at this point. As each chick hatches, the humidity spikes in the incubator so it keeps it nice and high itself. Do monitor the temperature. Day 21, we finally have a pip. It's been forever coming. Wait, let's see, can we see it? It's on this egg here. There you go, see? The little triangular bit here on the right hand side, that's, that's your normal pip there, but he's after giving it a good little bash. There's a, a nice little bit cracked across, so a little chick hatched. So all's going well. This egg here is pipped also. Now this egg is pipped now over 12 hours and he hasn't started to zip yet. He's still just pipped. I don't see pips on any of the others, but that doesn't mean they're not pipped. It could be pipped underneath, but he's looking great. There's the egg he came out. 
perfect little zip. The egg is still intact. He just zipped around and popped out. The incubator can be an absolute mess when everything is hatched. They will eat it and drink it and I haven't found it to cause any problems so a lot of strange stuff can go on in here but it's all normal. Yes there we go there's a big piece of shell hit here as well so his little beak is in there. They will always pip anti-clockwise so he's going to be pipping this way and I'll try to find some diagrams and put them up now of how this happens inside the egg it's amazing they're curled up they put their little heads tucked in under their right wing and out the other side to where their little beak is able to hit the eggshell and because of the position they're in then they're able to turn their little bodies each time they pip they, they push themselves around and then pip again and they do this the whole way around the egg this is why it's not a quick process so from the time they pip to the time they actually hatch is often around 24 hours. Now it's more commonly around 12 hours and it can be sooner than that or it can be a little bit later. So now that the hatching has begun I will turn down the temperature. The temperature is it's on its way down now it's at 30, 37 it was 37.6 it's on its way down I will just leave it about 35.5 so still nice and warm in there but we don't want it too warm or this little guy will start gasping. Wait for the chicks to hatch. It commonly goes over 21 days, 22 days, even 23 days. So don't panic if nothing's happening. Give it another day or two. If you still don't have anything happening at day 22, 23, you can candle the eggs again and see if there's any movement. Really what you're looking for at this stage is full eggs. So you shouldn't really be able to see anything inside the egg. If you tap the egg with your fingernail at this point and hold it up to your ear, you should hear the baby chicks chirping. If all that fails and you still don't see any signs of life, fill a bowl with a few inches of very warm water. So you're looking to keep the water about the same temperature as the egg will be. So about 37 degrees Celsius. Gently place each egg in the water. Make sure the egg is not pipped or you're going to drown the chick. So if it's definitely not pipped, this is called the water test. If you place the egg in the water, if there is life inside that egg, it should create little ripples in the water and the egg will bob around. If the egg is no longer containing a live chick, it will remain completely still. Once your chicks have hatched and dried, remove them from the incubator and place them in your brooder box. Make sure that they have dried off first so I will leave them in the incubator for a minimum of 12 hours once they have hatched. Once they hatch, they are absorbing egg yolk, so they don't need to eat or drink straight away. And they are actually okay up to three days, but after one to two days, they will become hungry. So it's good to get them out as soon as they've dried off. If there are eggs that have pipped and not hatched, as you open your incubator, have a piece of soaked kitchen paper in your hand to immediately pop into the incubator to keep that humidity nice and high. So you want this piece of kitchen paper soaked in hot water and slip it in as soon as you crack open the incubator, get out those dry chicks and close the incubator again. Once you've locked down the incubator, if possible, it's really ideal if you don't open the incubator until all chicks have hatched. So remember, they're perfectly fine for 
definitely for 48 hours after hatch, they're still absorbing egg yolk. They will start to get noisy at that stage. They'll want out of that incubator and it's best to get them out if you can. Okay guys, now you know how to hatch chicken eggs. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and to leave a comment. And if you'd like to know how to raise your baby chicks, click here.